know he I'm thinks. I'm a drummer, man. Everybody thinks they're a drummer. Ah! Now he's dropping his drumsticks. My sex spell. It's not even a drum. It's a plastic bucket. No, it's a drum. It's a plastic bucket. You need glasses. All right. Okay, uh, podcast 3.2. All right, 3.2. By so, the way, 3.2 is a bit of a typo, or actually 3.2 is correct. Our last one should have been 3.1. We apologize. I think we called it 2.2. So Mr. Bergman's still not quitting his day job. Okay, I will keep my Back day job. Back to chemistry we go. I am now yeah. a drummer with my sticks. He's a drummer kazoo player ukulele guy. Yeah. So, today we want to learn about how to uh, do some uh, problems. We're still kind of doing review stuff, folks. This is not new. Yeah, nothing we new. We do have a new thing, though, to teach you, So, yes. but not uh, until a little bit later. Okay. So, we're going to kind of go pretty quickly through the old stuff. Percent of mass, mass of moles. Divide by small, time still whole. Time still whole. You guys remember all that. remember that. There's a poster in both of our rooms. So, we're going to do this problem, this example, quite quickly. Yes, so. here we go. We've got a bunch of percentages of elements in a compound. We're going to just arbitrarily change those percentages into masses. We're just going to call them grams. So 10's molar mass is 118.7. So 118.7 grams. One mole. They're asking for that old Mr. Cottrell. He must be in trouble. Okay. All right. And uh, what have I got? What do you got? Uh, uh, iron, 12.4. 12.4 grams over 1. Is that a 12? That is a 12. You go. can't read very well, can you? And that's 55.8 grams in 1 mole. And then I've got uh, 16 carbon. carbon. 16 grams of carbon. I'm not putting the carbon on here since I'm putting it out here in the iron. Oop, that looks like chlorine. Um, still looks like chlorine. That's carbon. There's 12 grams in 1 mole. And uh, I have 18.8 .8 grams of nitrogen. No, I wrote the nitrogen. Okay, well, no big deal. 14 grams in one mole. And now I get my calculator out. So okay. in the 10, 52.8 divided by 118.7 is... It is uh, 0. 0.445. 44, 5. And then 12.4 divided by 55.8 is... Is... Dos, dos, dos. All right, I'm trying to do my Spanish. Nah, 1.333333333333. And this last one is... Is... 1.34. Now, divide by percent of mass. We did that. Mass to mole. These are all moles, by the way. I didn't label like I should have probably. Divide by small. The smallest number is the point two 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 two. I can do this when this is one. If I take point two 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 two, this I can see is two. And this I don't know. That one is, whoops, I did it wrong. 1.333 divided by point two 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 two. There we go. Is six. You're right. And then 1.34 divided by point two 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 is six. So you've got how many? Got We've got... Two tens, so S in two. Yep. F E one of one. those. I put a one, you don't have to really do that. And then C six H H six. N six. Oh N six, yes, sorry. Yeah, so uh, yeah, this actually has a different formula when you write it out uh, with a polyatomic ion, but we won't worry about that. That's how yep. you would do that. No big deal. There it is. Per formula. Okay. Set to mass, mass to mole, divide by small times. Times. Still whole. Next one is empirical formula's cousin. Molecular which is formula. Molecular formula. Now, now, if you're going to do a molecular formula, okay. so a molecular formulas are just our. Uh, <laughs> oh, they're, they're the, I know, looking at our blanks. What did we mean here? Those are the actual formulas. The actual the, formulas, that's right. Not just the simplest. Not the simplest. Oh, actual formula. Yes. I knew this. I wrote it. And I can't remember. It's uh, or not just the simplest uh, ratio. Ratio, yeah. So uh, an empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in a compound. The molecular formula is the actual formula of all the elements. You know, I have an analogy, Mr. Sam, that oh. helps us to remember this. Good times. Um, here is Mr. Bergman right here. And as you know, Mr. Bergman has, what, how many fingers and how many hands? What is the ratio of fingers to hands? I think most people, that's uh, five fingers per hand. No, yeah, all right. The ratio is five fingers to one hand. But now, Mr. Sims, look at me uh, right now with your eyeball. One, two. How eight, many fingers ten, do I actually? Oh, I, got ten I have fingers. ten fingers in two hands. So this is the ratio, correct? 
I if I can have. write the word ratio, the ratio here, that is the simplest. That's the lowest whole number ratio. But in actuality, hand. I actually have two hands That's and ten true. fingers. Yes, you do. So this is like the empirical formula, oh, yeah. and this is like hey, the molecular formula. That's there you cool. go. It, uh, I actually, like it. A student taught that to me you years like ago. It. I didn't learn it even myself. One of my amazing students who's probably like a doctor making triple his teacher's wage these days. Okay. Um, you mean doctors make more than teachers do? Well, you know, not not in reality, in money, but you see, we get much, much better strokes from our amazing students. That's true. And so we have job satisfaction. Uh, oh they yeah. only heal people. What's That's up right. With that? Yeah, job satisfaction. you got to remind me of that periodically. Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice to make a couple <laughs> of dollars. Nevertheless, oh. okay, molar, molar mass is... And you just basically, how would you know to go from... Um, that I had 10 to 2, you'd say, well, you'd actually could weigh it. Well, let's just do an example. You guys know how to do this. So yeah. Let's just do an example. So okay. let's determine the molecular formula. Basically, what we're going to do is we're, we know the molar mass, you see, of this particular compound is 306. So let's just do the percent of mass, mass to mole, divide by small, times, times to whole. whole. All right, so just Sodium is as a note here, um, wow, I love all the announcements going on today. Soccer is going on now, ladies yes, and gentlemen, it is. in those in uh, internet land. Guess what? They have soccer now. Yes, they do. And we then phosphorus is... Uh, phosphorus, 30.4%. So, by the way, when you're doing molecular formula problems, always start by finding the empirical formula first. That's what I was trying to say before I was interrupted by... Hey, look, we're going to get interrupted again. Yes. It's picture day, ladies and gentlemen. In oxygen, this is 16 grams in one mole. Hopefully, you can hear me over the nah. announcements. I'll talk into the microphone. Perhaps you should play your drums some more. Oh, ding, da, bing, bong. All right, let's just get this. We have a All calculator right, so out. All right, to mass, mass to mole. So we've got 22.5 divided by 23, and we've got 0 0.978. 30.4 divided by 31 is 0.981. And then 47.1 divided by 16 is 2.94. I see the smallest number is about 0.97. It's yeah, looking like that to me, yeah. So I can do the first two. That's close enough to one for all intents and purposes. I'm going to call that three. Am I, I correct? Yeah, I would say that's three. It's 3.0 something. So it's NAPO3. Now, if it's NAPO3, that is called the what formula? That is the empirical formula. That so is the lowest So we know that the ratio. molar mass of this is 306 grams per mole. Yes. Now, that's the molecular or molar mass, right. but we can find the empirical, empirical mass. mass. Let's do that. So if I find 23 for sodium, phosphorus is 31, oxygen is 16. If we add that all up, 102. I get 102 grams per mole. Think of this as my hands. You see, I have 102 grams of hands. Yes. Actually, in, in my, in my one ratio, hand. in one hand, this is like one hand. And my total weight of hands is, is 306. So in this How case, many hands do I have? It looks like three hands. Because if you take 102 times what, you get 306. Of course, that's three. So what this formula is incorrect, or it is the empirical formula, the molecular or actual formula would be NA3P3O9. You just triple them all because this number is yeah. a three. Is you guys remember that. Actually, that would be NA, NA, I can't write, na 3 p o Three, three, sodium phosphite. If you recall, they just write it differently. Of Why course. is there a three outside the parentheses? I don't think that exists. I think we just made up something. You are correct. That is phosphite has a minus three charge. I think we just made up a compound. Either I way, think Mr. Bergman made this problem up and was going too fast. But there is no such thing as Na3PO33. But that doesn't mean you can't do the problem. Well, so what? Okay, yep, moving on. It's moving on and it's going slow. We're waiting for the next screen to appear. Here All we right, go. Here we go. Now, okay. This is a particular issue, ladies and gentlemen. We have a more complex problem. And uh, we need to kind of work our way through some of these more complex problems. And uh, just kind of bear with me as I help to solve this. Um, this is an interesting problem. It's, uh, talking about the chemical propane. Uh, many of you probably heat your house with propane gas. You've got a big white tank that heats your house. We, those in internet land, we live in kind of a rural area. A lot of people heat their houses with propane. And it gets really cold It here. gets cold where we live. Yes, and so here's our problem. Now notice here we have gram numbers instead of percentages, but the rule still applies. Percent of mass, mass to mole, divide by small, times to whole. But that's not actually the read. Let's read this problem carefully. All right, basically, complete combustion of propane produced 
this many grams of carbon dioxide and this many grams of water. So to start this out, we need to write a balanced equation. Now, one thing we know about the propane, I think it said it somewhere, is it a compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen. So I'm going to call it a CHA compound. Now, I do not know what the value of, if it's, is it C1H4 or whatever, we need CXHY. We don't know what that is, and it's a combustion problem, so react it with oxygen. So this is a chemical reaction, like a balanced chemical equation, but we really can't balance it, as you'll see. It produces carbon dioxide and water. Always. And Anytime you combust the hydrocarbon. And you, you, you might be tempted sure. to try and balance these equations, but yep. you cannot because we do not know what these numbers are. That's the question. What are those numbers? Yes. Now, we do know a couple of pieces of information. We know that we have produced 2.641 grams of carbon dioxide. And of water, we make 1.442 grams. So the question is, is if we know how many grams of products there are, can we determine this formula? And the answer is yes, we can. The key is to find out the mass of the individual elements, the carbon and the hydrogen, and in some case, the oxygen. This one doesn't have that particular problem. Now, we're going to actually make use of the concept of the um, uh, percent composition to do this. So I'm going to do the carbon first. Now, here I want you to understand that the carbon on the left side is only in the CH compound. And on the, on the product side, the carbon is only in the carbon dioxide. That's a CO2. Yes. And by the way, the law of the conservation of matter says whatever the mass on one side of the equation is of the carbon will equal the mass of the carbon on the other side of the equation. That's important. So if I know the mass of the carbon on the product side, that is equal to the mass of the carbon on the reactant side. And that's what I'm going to figure out. I'm going to say the amount of carbon will be 2.641 grams of carbon dioxide over 1. Now watch what I do. It's a gram-gram ratio. I'm going to say that there is grams of CO2 for grams of carbon. Now these are just from the molar masses from the periodic table. Now the molar mass or atomic mass of carbon is 12, and the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44. 12 plus 16 plus 16. Now if you look carefully, what's going to happen is the grams of the CO2 is going to cancel out of grams of carbon, and I get 0 0.720 grams of carbon. You see? This same principle applies to, I want to find now the mass of the hydrogen. And so for the hydrogen, all of the hydrogen, the hydrogen, the mass of the hydrogen on the left side is equal to the mass of the hydrogen on the right side. And all the hydrogen is, in this case, in the CH CHA compound, and all of the hydrogen is in the water on the product side. Got it? So I simply will take the 1.442 grams of water. That's what I know, not grams of hydrogen, but grams of water. And then I'm going to say uh, grams of water from the periodic table. It is, of course, water weighs 18 grams in a mole. And this will be, now careful, 2 grams of hydrogen. Now I'm going to go simply H because there's H2O, and each hydrogen weighs 1, of course. And this is 0 0.160 grams. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I now have a grams, and that percent to mass, and I have what mass. What is that grams of, Mr. Berman? Grams of hydrogen. Thank you, I didn't write that down. And this is the mass, percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, times till whole. So if I now do that, and I do my carbon first, I have 0 0.720. 0 0.720 grams, and I will then say there's 12 grams in one mole, and that comes out to? That comes out to 0 0.06. 0 0.60. 060 moles, and the hydrogen was 0 0.160. 0 0.160 grams, and of course the molar mass of hydrogen is one gram in one mole, that's pretty easy, and that's 0 0.160. Divide by small, the small number is the 0 0.060. 0 0.0. You know, folks, I'm going fast, and I understand that I am. You're going to probably need to slow and pause this occasionally. And back it up. Yeah. Okay, so. Percent of mass, mass to mole, divide by small. Times to Till whole. whole. Now, now notice we those don't, are not whole numbers, Mr. Bergman. So we need to multiply. What number could I multiply these by, particularly mm. looking at this fraction here? Well, 0. 0.6666666666 is two-thirds. If yes. you look at it as a fraction. Two-thirds. Two-thirds. So to get rid of things as a fraction, you multiply by the denominator. So let's multiply by three. So that's going to be three. One times three is three. And 2.67 times three is eight. Eight. So the formula is simply C3H8. Don't believe us? Go watch a couple episodes of King of the Hill where Hank sells propane and propane accessories. Mr. Bourbon doesn't know what that is. I don't watch that show, so I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about.
I don't watch much TV. I don't have TV anymore either, but I used to watch it a lot. Okay, now we're going to do a problem that's a little bit more complex because this chemical has oxygen. So galactose is a brain sugar, and it's found in dairy products. 